15 things you didn't know about Cartier. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello Aluxers and welcome to another exciting original video presented by Alux.com. Today we're revealing some interesting and surprising facts about Cartier, the French luxury goods company with a long history of selling some of the finest watches and jewelry in the world. The House of Cartier was founded in 1847 when Louis-François Cartier inherited a jewelry workshop in Paris at the age of 29. Nearly 10 years later, he got his first royal client when French Princess Mathilde made her first Cartier purchase in 1856. In 1904, Cartier had built enough of a reputation to be named as the official purveyor to King Edward VII of the United Kingdom and King Alfonso XIII of Spain. In 1909, Louis-Francois' grandson, Pierre, established the New York City branch of the company. After Pierre's death in 1964, the remaining Cartier descendants who were in charge decided to sell the company. Cartier is currently owned by the granddaughter of Pierre Cartier, Al Pagels, and the Rupert family of South Africa through the luxury goods company Richemont. Although they are best known for their jewelry and watches, they also sell perfumes, eyewear, fashion accessories, and other fine goods like money clips, cufflinks, and stationery. Cartier has long been a favorite of royalty, celebrities, and the wealthy with their client list including names such as Queen Elizabeth, Nicole Kidman, Angelina Jolie, Kate and Pippa Middleton, Kylie Jenner, Princess Diana, Michelle Obama, Zac Efron, and we could go on. Cartier embodies true beauty and luxury in timeless pieces that we know many Aluxers would love to add to their collection. So let's take a closer look at this incredibly successful brand that has been delivering the finest products for 170 years with the 15 things you didn't know about Cartier. Number 1. Cartier sold the most expensive ruby in the world in 2015. Cartier put their Sunrise Ruby, a 25.6 carat Burmese ruby, up for auction with Sotheby's Auction House in 2015. The final bid, which came from an anonymous buyer, was $30,335,698, making it the most expensive ruby, the most expensive colored gemstone, and the most expensive non-diamond gemstone in the world. The previous record for the highest price ruby was the Graf Ruby Ring, which sold for $8.6 million back in 2014. Number 2. Cartier gave the love bracelet to 25 famous couples when it was introduced. The iconic Cartier love bracelet was designed in 1969 and still remains one of the best-selling pieces in the history of Cartier. The bracelets were designed so they could only be taken off with a special screwdriver that comes with it at the time of purchase. When the bracelets were first introduced, Cartier got some major publicity by giving matching bracelets to 25 of the most famous couples of the time, including the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, Sophia Loren and Carlo Ponti, Ali McGraw and Steve McQueen, and Nanny and Frank Sinatra. Number 3. Pierre Cartier bought his Fifth Avenue New York City with a pearl necklace. In 1914, Pierre Cartier was able to make an incredible real estate deal with millionaire Morton Plant, who owned a building on the corner of Fifth Avenue and 52nd Street. Morton's fiance had her eye on a particular Cartier double strand pearl necklace, and Cartier was eager to move his store to a more high end location. Morton ended up giving Cartier what would become his flagship store location in exchange for the pearl necklace and $100. Number 4. JP Morgan bought his first Cartier mystery clock. The mystery clock was designed in 1913 and it got its name because the hour and minute hands seemed to be mysteriously floating. The illusion was achieved by mounting the hands to transparent rock crystal. Cartier decorated these clocks with a number of diamonds and gemstones and shaped them into individual works of art. The first mystery clock was purchased by financier J.P. Morgan in 1929 for $3,200. It was created by the original mystery clock designer Maurice Couet and it was in the shape of a temple. The clock was put up for auction in 1993 and the winning bid was over $1.5 million. Number 5. The most expensive love bracelet is 
Originally, the love bracelet sold for $250 and it was silver plated with 18 karat gold. Soon after the first bracelets were on the market, Cartier started making the popular bracelets out of solid gold, and the first diamond studded bracelet was available in 1979. Now, there are a wide variety of love bracelet options available with the least expensive being the $1,200 pink cord that comes with two links made of brown ceramic and 18 karat gold with four diamonds totaling 0.01 carats. The most expensive is the $56,000 18 karat white gold option, which is set with 216 brilliant cut diamonds totaling 3.16 carats. Number 6. Alfred Cartier was the first to use platinum in making jewelry. Platinum in the 19th century was incredibly expensive and difficult to work with. In 1847, Alfred Cartier was the first to take on the challenge of using this high-end metal for making jewelry. He used the strong metal to accentuate the brilliance of diamonds, and he commonly incorporated it into his garland-style pieces. Number 7. The Patala Necklace was one of the most extravagant pieces of jewelry created by Cartier. In 1928, the Patala necklace was created by Cartier for Bhupinder Singh of Patala, who was the ruling Maharaja of the state of Patala in India at the time. The necklace had 2,930 diamonds, including the world's seventh largest diamond, known as the De Beers, which was around 234 carats. Seven of the other diamonds were also quite large, ranging from 18 to 73 carats. The necklace also featured a number of Burmese rubies. In 1948, the necklace disappeared, but the De Beers diamond resurfaced in 1982 and was sold at a Sotheby's auction in Geneva for $3.16 million. In 1998, the missing part of the necklace was found at a second-hand jewelry store in London, but it was missing the Burmese rubies and the seven large diamonds in addition to the De Beers. Cartier purchased the incomplete necklace and restored it to its original state, although not exactly, since they used cubic zirconia and synthetic diamonds to replace the missing jewels. Number 8. Cartier popularized wristwatches for men In the early 1900s, wristwatches were typically worn by women while the pocket watch was considered the gentleman's timepiece. After his friend Brazilian aviator Alberto Santos Dumont complained to Louis Cartier about having difficulty recording flight times with his pocket watch, Cartier went to work designing a more practical timepiece. He debuted his first men's wristwatch, called the Santos Watch, after his friend in 1904. The fame and achievements of Santos Dumont in the field of aviation helped boost the popularity of the watch, and the Santos Watch is still a popular watch model sold by Cartier. Number 9. New York City Hospitals Keep a Collection of Love Screwdrivers The love bracelet is so popular in New York City that many of the New York hospitals are sure to have a collection of love screwdrivers handy so that they can remove the bracelet from a patient's wrist if necessary. Number 10. Kate Middleton was given a special Cartier watch by Prince William for their third anniversary. In 2014, Kate Middleton received a Ballon Bleu de Cartier watch from her husband, Prince William, to celebrate their third wedding anniversary. The watch was embedded with a sapphire stone that matches the one in Kate's engagement ring, which used to belong to Princess Diana. The watch costs around $7,000. If you would like to learn more interesting facts about the Duchess of Cambridge, click in the upper right-hand corner to check out our video of 15 things you didn't know about Kate Middleton. Number 11. As of May 2017, Cartier is the 61st most valuable brand in the world. When you think of all the millions of brands there are in the world, it is very impressive for a company to be listed anywhere in the top 100 brands, especially a company that has been operating for 170 years. As of 2017, the Cartier brand is still going strong, coming in 61st on Forbes' Most Valuable Brands list. In 2016, new stores opened in Australia, China, Thailand, and Turkey, and the company did $5.7 billion in sales. Number 12. The Tutti Frutti Collection originated in 1901. The popular Tutti Frutti collection by Cartier originated in 1901 with a necklace commissioned by Queen Alexandra of Great Britain to be worn with three Indian gowns that she had received as a gift. The distinctive styling of the jewelry is characterized by the brightly colored gemstones carved using Indian techniques that are set in French platinum and diamond mountings. 
Although it was a very popular style in the 1920s, it didn't get the tutti frutti name until 1970. It remains one of the most celebrated Cartier collections. Number 13. Jacqueline Kennedy's watch is the most expensive Cartier tank ever sold. In 2017, one of Cartier's trademark tank watches that was owned by United States First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis became the most expensive tank ever sold, with a winning bid of $379,500 at an auction in New York City. The 18 karat gold watch is a square-shaped Cartier tank ordinaire that was one of three of its kind produced in 1963. Number 14. A Cartier Panther Bracelet is the most expensive bracelet ever sold at auction. Edward III was King of the United Kingdom from January 1936 until December of that same year when he abdicated his throne to marry American socialite Wallace Simpson. The couple had several items commissioned from Cartier over the course of their marriage, including a Panther Bracelet made with 545 pave set diamonds and caliber cut onyx stones, with two emeralds for the Panther's eyes. In 2010, that bracelet became the most expensive bracelet ever sold at auction, with a winning bid of $7 million, despite having several small stones missing. Number 15. Cartier sold the Hope Diamond in 1910. Recognized as the most expensive piece of jewelry in the world, the Hope Diamond changed hands more than 20 times before it was finally given to the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C., where it has been on display since 1958. One of the owners was Pierre Cartier, who bought it in 1910 for $150,000, which is around $3.86 million at today's valuation. He sold it to Washington, D.C. millionaires Evelyn Walsh and Edward Beale McLean in 1911 for $180,000, or $4.5 million at today's valuation. The Blue Diamond is currently valued at $250 million. Now that you've learned more about Cartier, we'd like to know, which luxury jewelry brand do you prefer? Let us know what you think in the comments! Still here? Here's a bonus fact just for you. Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Cambridge, wore Cartier's Halo Tiara featuring 739 brilliant cut diamonds and 149 baguette cut diamonds during her wedding to Prince William back in 2011. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers! Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.